Hi again, everyone. I was at Mass, and the reading this morning was interesting to me because it reminded me of something I've wanted to mention about Father James Martin. Yet again, sorry. I've wanted to point out that there is an untruth. I'm not going to call it a lie because I hope and pray that he's not lying on purpose. I hope it's just this untruth that he's unaware that he's telling. Um, but it's a very common thing that James Martin says to his many, many followers. Uh, and then I'll explain why it's tied into today's gospel reading. But he's an L, now we know Father James Martin is, he is an LGBTQAI plus activist. He is an activist and he um, has a huge following of people who are very much active uh, active homosexuals, active in the transgender movement. They just adore him. So he says something that's very misleading, but he repeats it a lot from what I've seen. And I, um, basically it's, it's this, and this is a quote from him about how John the Baptist and Jesus encounter people. So he says, quote, for John the Baptist, the model was to convert first and then be welcomed into the community. For Jesus, it's community first, conversion second. But then again, is that true? Is that actually true? Well, no, it's actually not true. It's not true at all. Here are John the Baptist's very first words of active ministry. And I quote, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That is Matthew 3, 2. Now let's compare those words to Jesus' first words of active ministry. Here are Jesus' first words. Quote, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the quote, end quote. Matthew 4, 17. Matthew 3, 2. Matthew 4, 17. These words are identical. Both John and Jesus lead with repentance and conversion. I will, as I said in a blog post about this a long time ago, I will let you speculate as to why James Martin says something different and badly misrepresents Jesus on this issue. Now, we know that Jesus encountered people and we know that John the Baptist encounter people. We know that there is is a, a love for those people. But whether, <laughs> when and whether Jesus was encountering people, he always led them pretty quickly from encountering them to repentance. Because, um, again, he, I, James Martin loves to talk about Zacchaeus. Um, and he kind of leaves out the part that... <laughs> Zacchaeus really quickly repented, really quickly. So I would invite you, first of all, to look at James Martin's followers. You can you can spend time on his Facebook page, his Twitter, whatever. The people who adore him have been have been accompanied by him for many years. A lot of these people, it's been years and years and years. I'm waiting for where the repentance comes in. When when does the repentance come in for for James Martin? Does he? ever call them to repentance if they're active homosexuals, if they're um, actively okay with the lie of transgenderism, um, you know, goes completely against the Catholic Church, and he's a Catholic priest. So when does he call them, as Jesus does, pretty quickly to repentance? I would be where any priest or bishop who is all about accompany accompaniment and never about a call to repentance because that means they're not about salvation of souls and if they're not about salvation of souls what are they for what are they for we all need to repent we all need to be called to repentance and if we're in mortal sin which the sexual sins are mortal sins um and they are they are serious sins deadly sins if we want to get into the semantics of what is a mortal sin we can do that in another video but uh james martin knows that they are considered deadly sins that are mortal for those who know that they are deadly sins. Where is the repentance part? I'd like to know. So um, 
what today's reading was, was from, again, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. And it says, Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done since they had not repented. Okay, so it's like pretty quick. We're not talking years and years going on here. He said, woe to you, Chorazin. I don't know if I'm getting that pronunciation right. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have long ago repented in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. So again, they had not repented. They had not repented. Jesus was not pleased. So this idea that there's just accompaniment forever and we just kind of go along. I don't know. Where do you accompany him to? To Starbucks and just have some drinks for like, I don't know five, 10 years? When is the repentance coming in so that these people, all of us can be saved? So please, again, James Martin is the guy. He's the, the bomb in the LGBTQ community. And they love him because he never calls them to repentance. He always just says that the rest of us have to get with it and start accepting. And I believe he even said reverencing these relationships that are seriously sinful. So don't believe what he says because he's not reliable. Again, whether he's lying on purpose or not, I don't know. You be the judge. But he does say something completely wrong about pitting John the Baptist against Jesus. Completely wrong. They both lead with the word repent, repent. So anyway, all right, that's it for now. Um, I hope you guys have a great day.